I am very grateful to all of the assembled devotees for allowing me to make some attempt to be of some small service this evening by repeating the message of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and our beloved previous Acharyas in the supremely holy land of Sri Mayapur Dham. Today in our Parikrama, devotees went on a Harinam Sankirtan procession to Srivas Angam the home of Srivas Thakur. Vrindavan Das Thakur in his Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, he writes that just as Krishna was born in the house of Vasudeva and Devaki, but performed his most intimate pastimes at the house of Nanda Maharaj and Gokul. Similarly, Krishna, who has appeared as Lord Chaitanya, he took his birth in the house of Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra, but performed his most intimate pastimes at the house of Srivas Thakur. It is the Rasastali of Lord Chaitanya's Leela. There is no difference between Navadweep and Vrindavan. They are identical. However, in Navadweep, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, or Krishna and Balaram, They open the doors to Vrindavan and invite even the most unqualified people from all over the world to enter into what is ordinarily only for a very confidential circle of the highest devotees. Therefore, Navadweep is Odarya Dham. Non different than the Madhurya Dham of Braj, Bhumi, but extending itself to welcome everyone in this age of Kali Yuga. Therefore, Rupa Goswami has prayed Namo Mahabharanyaya Krishna Prema Padayate. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaudat Veshe Namaha. It appears to be a contradiction. He is praying that Lord Chaitanya, most munificent, most merciful of all incarnations, although he is Krishna himself, he's even more merciful than Krishna. Does that make sense? How can Krishna be more merciful than Krishna? On the spiritual platform, all contradictions are resolved when we understand the principle of love and mercy. Radha bhava duti subalitam nomi Krishna swarupa. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, who has come to taste the sweetness of the love of his compassionate energy, the reservoir and source of all love, Srimati Radharani. And he has come into this age of Kali to distribute that love to anyone who will accept it. 
through his Nam Sankirtan movement. Nam Sankirtan has always been the process of self-realization for the age of Kali. Previous to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's descent, the Vaishnavas were constantly performing Nam Sankirtan. You see, the Lord sent his eternal associates before him to set the stage. They took birth in various places, but by the Lord's will, they all congregated in Sri Navadweep. Srivas had three brothers, Sri Ram, Sri Pati, Sri Nidhi. In the house of Srivas, they were constantly performing Harinam Sankirtan. But they were only criticized by the atheistic people of Navadweep. Nobody wanted to take the name of Krishna. People were immersed in scholarship, karmakanda, jnanakanda, some yogis, astanga kanda. But in the age of Kali, there's no other way attaining love of God except through Nam Sankirtan. Kalera dosa nide raja nasti heko mahan guna kirtana riva krishna sya mukta sangha param rajayit. Kali Yuga is ocean of faults. There's only one. There's only one benediction in Kali Yuga. That simply chanting Krishna's holy names, one can attain the perfection of liberation. Through other processes, we can attain piety. We can attain mystic powers. We may attain great wealth and influence in this world, good health, long life maybe even liberation. But Prema Pumarta Mahan, the real goal of life, love of God, is accessible through this age, through Krishna's Kali Kale Namarupe Krishna Avatar, through his incarnation as his holy name. In Fuliagram, Haridas Thakur was chanting 300,000 names a day, meditating and praying with every name. Krishna, please descend. Only you could deliver the people of this Kali Yuga. Sri Adwaita Acharya was fasting, offering Tulsi leaves, Gandhi's water, praying, praying from his heart of hearts, crying out so that the, so loudly the Lord could hear him in Goloka for Krishna to appear. Srivas Thakur and his associates and family were in Srivasangam doing kirtan with the prayer constantly for Krishna to come down and rescue these unfortunate souls. This is amazing. They had each other. They had the most wonderful sangam of devotees. And they were in ecstasy. But seeing anyone else suffering in forgetfulness of Krishna brought pain to their heart. That is a great Vaishnava. But that pain of compassion for others on a spiritual platform is a type of ecstasy. Why? Another apparent contradiction. How can pain be pleasure? In the material world, there are two different things. How can suffering simultaneous be ecstasy? The Srimad Bhagavatam explains when you water the root of the tree, every part of the tree is satisfied. Samsadir Haritoshana. The happiness of the soul is pleasing Krishna. When you please Krishna, your soul rejoices. When you displease Krishna,
Your soul is asleep. It's under the influence of suffering. So the pleasures of this world give pain to the heart. But what pleases Krishna gives pleasure to the heart, ecstasy. So Krishna is pleased, paradukaduki, when someone takes pain and seeing the pains of others on a spiritual platform. So all of these devotees suffering, crying, seeing so many people wasting their valuable human lives without Krishna consciousness. And they weren't idle. They were really trying to do something about it. But they were powerless. Only if Krishna comes can it be done. So because the suffering of their heart to see the ignorance of others, that was so pleasing to Krishna, he was actually giving them ecstasy. I hope that makes sense. Actually, it doesn't make sense. But the greatest things in life do not make sense. Material sense. To go beyond the purview of our limited intelligence, we must take shelter of faith. Faith to see what is invisible through the eyes of Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Guru and Sadhu and Shastra is Krishna's merciful words manifesting to the world through this process. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to the chanting of the holy name during the eclipse. We spoke some of Lord Chaitanya's early childhood pastimes yesterday until time expired. As Lord Chaitanya grew, he became Nimai Pandit, the greatest scholar that the world has ever seen. Such a scholar, Keshav Kashmiri, the Digvijay Pandit, who had conquered every scholar on earth, practically. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu easily defeated him without crushing his pride. Keshav Kashmiri understood this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Saraswati revealed it to him. He was so highly celebrated. And the devotees would try to preach to him, Nimai, if you become a devotee, the whole world will become a devotee. Take the name of Krishna. And Nimai would debate with them on the basis of academic scholarship and defeat them. They would try to run away, but he would grab them and catch them. Everyone except Srivas. Srivas would see Lord Chaitanya and he would say, why are you wasting this valuable human form of life in the pursuit of mundane education? Do you not understand that whatever you learn on this basis is all going to be vanquished with death? Why not seek out that which is eternal, that which is everlasting, the Lord of your heart, Sri Krishna? Lord Chaitanya did not argue with Srivas. He touched his feet, put the dust on his head, and said, by the blessings of a Vaishnav like you, someday I will be a devotee. Now, the devotee's constant prayer was, if Krishna, if you only make Nimai a devotee, he will expand the glories of Nam Sankirtan. He's so beautiful, so attractive, so powerful in every way.
He went to Gaya and there accepted initiation from one of the prominent disciples of Madhavendra Puri, Sripad Ishwara Puri. When he served his guru with love and devotion, received the mantra from his guru and received the order from his guru to take this Nam Sankirtan movement and preach it throughout the world. Then he revealed his mission. Then his ecstatic love was manifested. When he returned to Navadweep, This was the greatest pleasure. Do you know what Srivast Thakur's first words were when he heard that Lord Chaitanya had become a devotee like nobody else? He's experiencing and exhibiting symptoms of ecstatic love like the world has never seen. You see what happened is Srimad Pandit, a great devotee, was at Lord Chaitanya's house when he first arrived from Gaya. Lord Chaitanya was crying, crying, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? I saw him. He appeared before me, but then he left me. Where is Krishna? But he was saying it was so much emotion, so much depth, torrents of tears pouring through his eyes. Every morning, all the devotees would gather together near Srinivasa's house, where there was vines with Malati flowers, and they would pick those flowers to offer to their deities. And Srinivasa Thakur was told while he was picking the flowers, you won't believe what I have seen. Gauranga has become a devotee. He's constantly chanting Krishna's names now. And Srivast Thakur was in bliss. And his words were, Now may our family increase unlimitedly. Oh. That was the mood of Vaishnava. So Lord Chaitanya, started to perform kirtan with his devotees. So beautiful, so sweet. But the people of Navadvi were atheistic. And even the smart Brahmins who were very proud of their position, their scholarship, literally, they hated Vaishnavas. They persecuted Vaishnavas. At one time, they all gathered together and they were talking amongst each other that this Srivas and his brothers, they are the cause of all this deviation. In their house, not only all day long, all night long, they're screaming out God's names. What do they think? God is deaf? They think he can't hear them. He's in their heart. They could do their meditation silently. What is this loud screaming? And besides that, it is Chatur Masya now. The Lord is sleeping. They're screaming so loud, they'll wake him up. He'll be so angry. He may destroy the universe because of Srivas. He's a hypocrite. We know why he's screaming so loud. Because he's just a vagabond, him and his brothers. They don't work properly. They don't earn money. Because they're hungry. They're screaming in pain all night. And what they do behind those closed doors, we have heard. So many obscene, immoral activities. And now, 
the Mughal king has sent two boats full of soldiers to Navadweep because he heard about this loud chanting. They're going to plunder our families, our homes, because of Srivas. We should break down his house, we should throw it in the Gandris, we should tie up Srivas and his brothers and throw them in the ground at the feet of these soldiers and let them be beaten. The fact was, there was two boats of soldiers coming to Navadweep to investigate about this loud chanting of Hindu names, which was outlawed. The devotees, they were feeling, <clears throat> we are doing Krishna's will. If Krishna wants to protect us, he will protect us. If he wants to kill us, what is the harm, as long as he is pleased with us? But Srivast Thakur, he was thinking about what may happen to all the other devotees because of him. He was hosting these kirtans at his house and inspiring them. So he felt very grave concern for the other Vaishnavas because the boats were on their way. So he went into his deity room and was offering prayers and pujas to Lord Narasimha Dev to protect the Vaishnavas. Meanwhile, Lord Chaitanya was casually walking along the banks of River Ganga. The atheistic people saw him. What is he? He's one of them. He used to be a nice intelligent scholar. Look at what Srivas has done to him. He's ruined his consciousness. Even he's one of these sentimental fanatics who's chanting God's names. What has happened to him? And the boats are coming. And he looks like he's so peaceful. We know what he's doing. He's just pretending to be peaceful, but in his heart he's scared like anything, and he's just going to secretly escape from Navadweep and let us all be tortured. The Lord heard it and kept walking. But then he saw a herd of cows. There were little calves who were jumping up and down with their with their tails raised into the air. And they were butting each other with the heads. And there were other cows that were licking each other and sitting nicely, chewing on the grass. And others were jumping and leaping, very happy. And when Lord Chaitanya saw that, he remembered his identity as Gopal of Vrindavan and went into ecstasy. He screamed out, I am he, I am he, and ran right to the house of Srivas. Srivas was doing his Narasinga Puja behind the closed doors. Lord Chaitanya kicked the door. <coughs> Srivas, Srivas, it is me. And Shivas was wondering, what's this? <laughs> this door is being kicked. He called out, Whom do you worship? That person is now standing before you. Shivas opened his door, and there he saw Lord Chaitanya revealing his supreme opulence with four arms as the Lord of Vaikuntha. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, please worship me, offer prayers. Shiva said, for so many days, you have been living in Navadweep and we didn't even recognize who you are. But now I see, you are the worshipable Lord of our life. 
I can see you standing before me now. You have a peacock feather in your hair. You have a complexion like a dark moon, like dark monsoon cloud. Your eyes like blooming lotus petals. Your lips red like the rising sun. You are holding your flute, standing with three bends in your body. My Lord, you are the, you are the Lord of Brindavan, the reservoir of all rasas who has descended to take his residence in Navadweep, only to establish within the world the Harinam Sankirtan movement. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, He told Srivas that, yes, I am the Lord that you have been praying for and longing for. Srivas was so humble. He said, I'm such a fool. I treated you like a regular person. Not only that, sometimes I would meet you at the Ganges and you would offer to wash my clothes, and I let you wash my clothes. And then you would dry them and fold them. You'd even bring them home for me. My Lord, it is your great desire to be the servant of the servant of your devotees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You are Lord Krishna, you are Lord Rama, you are Varaha, you are Ramana Dev. And now you have appeared as the son of Sachi Devi. Shivas Thakur wept, tear after tear after tear, in love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, bring your wife, bring your children, bring all your relatives, all your servants and maidservants. They all came and Lord Chaitanya manifested his eternal spiritual form to all of them. And they all were re received his lotus feet on top of their head. Then Lord Chaitanya said to Srivas, do not be afraid of these Mughal soldiers that are coming. Yes, they are coming on two boats. But if I do not prompt them to harm you, how can they harm you? I will stop them. But if they act independent of me, I will go and be the first person to board the boat and I will tell the king, I am the king of all kings, get off of your throne. And if he fails to do that, then I will say, king, bring all your priests, bring all your scholars, bring the mullahs, bring the kazis, and then bring the elephants and the deers and the dogs and all the other animals and birds and have them recite from their scripture and make the animals cry in ecstasy. And they will try and they will fail. And then I will tell the king, you just watch what I will do. And I will go into the forest and grab the tail of the wild elephant and bring him into the courtyard of the king. And then I'll bring the deers and the dogs and the cats and the birds and the snakes and everyone else. And I will begin Nam Sankirtan. And all the animals will start weeping in ecstasy and roll on the ground. And then the king will fall off his throne, weeping in ecstasy and roll on the ground. And then all the mullahs and all the kazis and all his soldiers will fall to the ground, weeping and weeping in ecstatic love, chanting the holy name. <laughs>
believe me, Srivas? If not, watch what I will do. Then the Lord turned and saw in the corner of the room was Srivas Thakur's four-year-old niece. Her name, Narayani. Lord Chaitanya turned to her and said, Narayani, chant Krishna's name and cry in ecstasy. The simple little girl, suddenly, from her heart of hearts, she cried out, Krishna, 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 Krishna. Torrents of tears poured from her eyes, her limbs trembled, her hair stand on end, and she fell to the ground in ecstatic love. When Srivas Thakur saw that, he leaped in the air. He said, my Lord, I have no fear. As long as I have you and, the, and your holy name, that even when you appear as time personified to destroy the entire cosmic manifestation, I will be blissfully chanting your holy names. Lord Chaitanya said, Srivas, because of your faith in my word, even if that day comes when Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, loses all her wealth and has to take to the streets with a begging bowl to beg for her subsistence, there will never be shortage of anything in your house because of your faith in my word. That was the first revelation of Srivas Thakur and his family that Nimai of Navadweep was the Supreme Personality of God. A great lesson of this story is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave his darshan and gave ecstatic love of God to even the maid servants and servants of Srivas Thakur because he wanted to show the world that there is no higher position than being the servant of a Vaishnava. Due to karma or whatever, we may be in all sorts of various conditions. We may be a king, but Lord Chaitanya taught that millions and millions and millions of kings who live for millions and millions and millions of yugas, they cannot understand Krishna. But one simple little maidservant of Srivas Thakur understands Krishna perfectly. Because of their sincerity to serve the Vaishnavas. To have the blessings and the love of a devotee is the most precious wealth that one can achieve in this world. Because the love of a devotee is the love of Krishna manifesting through his or her heart. Many, many wonderful pastimes, unlimited pastimes took place in Sri Vasanga. One day, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the devotees, We're doing kirtan all day, but we're wasting the whole night sleeping. Human life is so rare, every moment is so precious. Srila Prabhupada quotes Chanakya Pandit that there's nothing more valuable than every moment we have in our human life. 
Because if you waste a moment, you cannot buy that moment back with all the wealth of Indra. So why do we waste our time? We should just do kirtan all night long as well. And then he gave instructions. How we will be able to do kirtan all night long and all day long. Trinadapi suniche na taror ibasihishnana amani na manade na kirtaniya sadahari. Now, during the kirtans at Srivasa's house, the devotees were manifesting such symptoms of divine love. But Lord Chaitanya was in the mood of a devotee. On very rare occasions, he would reveal his divine opulences as Bhagavan. But he came to teach the world primarily by his example. If anyone called him God, he would hold his ears and scream out, Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu. Nothing could ever pollute my heart or anybody's heart worse than thinking that they're God. Hare Krishna. You now the impersonalists, the Mayavadis, their goal of life is to become God. Lord Chaitanya's teaching, there is nothing that can pollute the heart worse than the misconception of thinking that I'm God. Do not pollute me by tempting me with this idea. Because you see, the whole desire to enjoy, to control, is we want to imitate God, who is the controller and the enjoyer of everything. So in the role of a devotee, he would take the dust of the feet of all the Vaishnavas and cry out Krishna's holy names and induce everyone to worship Krishna. And he led the way. But on rare occasions, for a few minutes only, he would go into an ecstasy and sit on the throne of Vishnu and then he would get down again. But today we will describe for some time one of the most amazing pastimes that has ever been manifested in this universal creation. Where Lord Chaitanya for 21 hours fulfilled every desire of every one of his devotees in the mood of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is called the Sat Praharayala Bhava or Mahaprakash Lila. With your permission. Like any other day in the morning, he came to the house of Srivas. Mukunda Dat was there, Adwaita Charya, Gadadhar Pandit, Haridas Thakur. All were assembled. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu induced them to begin kirtan. He started to dance. Suddenly, he entered into a mood, a mood that devotees have never seen him in before. Just by looking at him, they could understand something extraordinary is about to happen. The Lord then went on the altar of Srivasa's house, sat on the throne of Lord Vishnu. Then he said to the kirtan leaders, sing the Abhishek song. So they knew exactly what he meant. They went to the Ganga, were bringing many, many pots of water. As they were singing the song, Nityananda Prabhu was the first to pour Ganges water over Lord Chaitanya. And then Gadadhar Pandit and Adwaita Charya and all others were helping. 
Now, generally, for a standard Abhishekam, 108 pots of Ganges water are utilized. But the devotees were so enthusiastic, and Lord Chaitanya was so accommodating. Thousands and thousands of buckets of Ganges water, pots, were brought, and they kept bathing him and bathing him and bathing him. And the servants and maid servants of the house of Srivas were running to the Ganges as fast as they could and bringing the pots, big heavy pots, and putting them down in nice lines and going back and putting another. Lord Chaitanya happened to see one simple maid servant. She was bringing the pots completely in the background. The senior Vaishnavas, they were all there, right, surrounding Lord Chaitanya. Gadadhar Pandit was offering him chewing spices. 